All right, we have reached the point where we're going to talk about the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a, a really interesting system, and it has two very diverse kinds of major functions. Uh, most people, uh, when they think of the lymphatic system, I'm sure they think of immunity and fighting off disease, but there's one other very major function that it has that in a weird sort of way um, is what allows for surveillance and defense and, and that kind of thing. And what it is, is draining of excess tissue fluid. We had talked in the previous section when we were talking about blood vessels, we had talked about capillary exchange. And we had talked about how when, you, when the blood, due to blood pressure pumping, um, as the blood is making its way through the arteries, through the arterioles, and to the capillaries, we had talked about how there was a little bit of pressure left as the blood was entering into the capillaries. And what that did is that pushed fluids from the capillaries out into the tissue spaces, the interstitial spaces. And then we had said that because that fluid had left the capillary, there was some um, proteins, uh, which would be the, um, especially the albumins, which you should know by now. The albumins um, have a low enough molecular weight. They're large enough to be retained, but a low enough molecular weight where they have a high osmotic attractiveness to the water that's in the interstitial fluid. And so a lot of the water comes back into the vein at the venule end. It comes back into the capillary at the venule end due to osmosis. But not all of it. Some of it stays out there as tissue fluid. And you have to collect this tissue fluid back into the circulatory system. And one of the major functions of the lymphatic system is to do just that. I've got a diagram here on the board. I'm going to move out of the way. At this end, you can see a blind capillary. And when I say blind, it's closed. It's closed at the end. But the way the cells are sort of laid one on top of the other, water can force its way in between the cells that make up the wall of the capillary, but they can't push their way out. So it, it's like a one-way door that allows the tissue fluid to make its way into the lymphatic capillaries. Now, just like the, the veins that in the, the circulatory system, there are valves that only allow this collected fluid to go one direction. And so, the, so this tissue fluid that is collected makes its way through the capillaries and into larger collecting ducts. And along the way, it's going to pass through expanded locations, which are the lymph nodes. And you have lots and lots of lymph nodes. And inside of these lymph nodes, we're going to have lymphocytes and macrophages that are going to be watching for um, pathogens. So if you think about, well, how would a pathogen make its way into your body? through this tissue fluid, you know, through through your skin, into the tissue fluid, and into, into these capillaries. So it's the perfect place to monitor for infections. So the fluid is going to make its way down through the, all of these uh, vessels that get progressively larger and larger and through uh, all of these different lymph nodes. And you have lymph nodes in multiple locations throughout your body. And ultimately, though, the, the tissue fluid is going to make its way back into the venous circulation. Um, and it's uh, interesting, in slide number two, I have a picture which shows the two major collecting ducts that are going to bring the tissue fluid to the subclavian veins. So in your shoulders, you have subclavian veins veins, and that's where the tissue fluid is ultimately going to make its way. But 
the funny thing is, if when you look at slide number two, you need to look at slide number two, you're going to see that we have the right lymphatic duct is going to drain the your right side of your face, your right shoulder, your right arm, and your right chest. And then all other parts of your body are going to be collected into the left subclavian vein. So the right, the right thoracic duct is going to feed into the right subclavian vein. But then on the left side and the lower part of your right body, right side of your body, everything is going to feed into the, what we call the thoracic duct and go into the left subclavian vein. And so, so we have this system of blood vessels or, or lymphatic vessels more accurately that are going to be collecting tissue fluid and that is one of the two major functions of the lymphatic system. The second function is going to be surveillance and defense, uh, fighting off infections. And that will be what we will talk about through the rest of through the rest of this discussion of the lymphatic system.